Hello again, everyone, and welcome to part two of my teddy bear tutorial from cgcookie.com. Again, my name is Jonathan Williamson, and this time around, rather than modeling the teddy bear, we're going to go right in and texture a really awesome burlap texture. Now, the really cool part about this is that we're going to use strictly procedural materials within Blender to get a really awesome effect. And I think a lot of people really underestimate the power of procedurals, and so I want to maybe you know, show you that we can do a lot more than a lot of people think with strictly procedural materials within Blender. Now, the one difference this time around is we're actually going to be using a text texture plugin, which unfortunately most people really don't know much about, but are a great resource to uh, producing good procedural materials within Blender. This time around, I'm going to be using the R underscore weave plugin, and these are all available public domain from the Blender Texture plugin resource or repository, which I will provide a link in the description for this tutorial, so don't worry about that. And to do this, let's just go ahead and with our teddy bear selected, let's add a new material, and then just before doing anything, jump right on over to the texture buttons and click Add New. And we're going to select as the texture type, rather than clouds or musgrave or anything like that like we normally would, we're going to select plugin and this allows us to browse for the plugin file so that we can just pull it right into blender and in my case it's in my program files blender blender folder and it's just r underscore weave dot dll just select it and click select plugin now this is very cool because all of a sudden we have a lot more power uh, beyond just the texture types within blender and so this is really going to allow us to get some cool effects and you can see we've got this nice weave pattern going on and all these different settings here that we can play with to get exactly what we want and there's a couple of settings that i want to play with and one is the let's just change the uh, wrap x and wrap y just to make sure that it's completely tileable and then let's also just change the the tiles up to eight now you can see that some of these other settings, you know, we can change the width of the individual strands. For example, if we put this to 0 0.001, we've got very thin strands, 0 0.01. So if you're doing thread or something like that, and the highest it goes is 0 0.5, I believe. Yes. And then you know you can also change the noise size. There's a lot of different things that you can do to get a lot more power to this. And so just play around a little bit, see what you like. You know, you can make it very distorted, uh, use it for other things other than its intended purpose of making weaves. So, you know, there's really a lot that you can do past just its, you know, initial initial value. But in our case, we don't need a whole lot here. So we're just going to uh, change the tile up to about 8. And let's see, our OSH to make it nice and smooth, we'll just change that to 4. And then we're going to leave the pattern as is. The pattern, if you change it, you can change the weave pattern on the actual weaves, but we're just going to leave that at the default because that'll work well. Remember, we're going for a nice burlap texture here, so we want a very a woven feeling. Now, if we just render this right now, it's going to look awful, as you can see. It, a, it's purple, it's distorted, it's flat, it's ugly. However, I want to do one thing that in literally just a couple of seconds is going to improve this drastically. And that is to go ahead and add some UV mapping to this, this teddy bear. Now, like I said, we're using strictly procedural materials, in which case you would think, oh, I don't need any UV mapping. However, this is completely wrong. You don't always need UV mapping. However, it can give you a lot more control. Because using particularly this plugin, it's gonna, you're going to have a very hard time getting it to wrap well around a model like this. On flat surfaces it's great, but anything that changes a lot is going to be very tough. But by laying out our UVs we can make it completely flat and thus work very very well. And so what I'm going to do is imagine if this were a real teddy bear. You would see where each place it was stitched together with the individual pieces of burlap there'd be a seam. And so in this case we can actually make seams work for us, since usually when UV mapping and texturing, you try to avoid seams. But in this case, it's actually an advantage and makes it a lot easier on our part. So, I'm just going to select each one of the seams, just the, the single center edge loop, and then just hit Control e and click Mark Seam. So I'll do that there. Select this loop with Alt-Shift-Right-Click, Control e 
mark seam, do this down here. There we go, mark seam. Let's do it around the leg, mark seam. Now, I realize that we made one mistake when modeling this, uh, and that is that the legs need a seam along here. And so, rather than model that in for now, I'm just going to select this edge here, deselect this vertice, deselect this vertice, just like that, and hit Control E and mark a seam there. And that'll also help us in terms of the distortion. Oh, and I forgot one more, and that's just around the hand here, since each one of these would be seams in the fabric. Okay, so with those placed, let's just select everything except for the eyes and the butt and the nose, which you can deselect by moving your mouse over them and hitting Shift L, and then hit U Unwrap. Okay, so you can see what we've got here. Now let's hit Render. We should see no change whatsoever. Okay, what the heck? And this is because we need to go over to the Materials buttons, to the Map Input, and change this from Orco to UV. And this will tell the material to use the UV coordinates to map the texture. Now let's see what happens. Much, much better. Although you'll notice that it's too much too large. And that's very easily solved by strictly changing the size here. Now, since I've already played around this a little bit, let's just try 5. And so I'm just hitting 5, tab, 5, tab. And so I want to change all three of the, the axes. Let's render now. Much, much better. Now we're going to go ahead and leave it at this size for now, even though I realize that it's a little big, just because we want to start to see the effects. First off, we really don't like this purple. So let's go ahead and get a nice, you know, tan, natural thread color, which we can get by going to the texture buttons, or excuse me, the map to, and since we're still using the default settings in here with in terms of colors, we can just change this color here to a nice kind of tannish brown. So we'll just kind of play around until we get something that we like. That looks about good. So now you can see when we render it, already it looks much better. But it's very flat. So let's add some bumping bump to it, which we can select NOR, and maybe just increase that a little bit. Well, maybe not quite that much. Now hit render. Already it looks quite a bit better except that it looks very plasticky. And this is because we need to turn the spec value way, way down. There we go. Now it's starting to look a bit like cloth. Okay, now, before we go further, let's go ahead and scale that down a bit more. So let's try 6. And remember, this is under the Map Input tab. You can just change the size value. Hit Render Now. It's still a little big, so we're going to go ahead and go to 8. That's starting to look a little better, but still a little big. So we'll just go all the way up to 10. And you know, this you just, it's kind of personal preference, but also you want something that's going to look fairly realistic. Okay, that's not bad, but let's go a little smaller, and I don't believe we can go any higher than 10 here. Oh, yeah, we can. Let's do 12. There we go. Okay, that's starting to look about what we want. Now you'll notice there's some size difference in this, but we can adjust that later by adjusting the UVs. So let's go ahead and save this, since now we've got a fairly nice burlap already, frankly. From a distance and with, you know, some correct lighting, you could actually get away with it just like this. Now, you'll notice one thing, or, yeah, one thing is that you'll notice along the front here, where we don't have any seams, we're getting this distortion, where there's actually a seam. And this is because we still have our mirror modifier applied. So let's see what happens if we leave edit mode, go to our edit buttons, and click apply on the mirror modifier. And then go back in, select everything again, except for the buttons. And hit U and unwrap. So now we have two complete section, two complete halves. And now if we render it, there we go. Now we've got one solid seam. However, you'll notice the head is much too large. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we can see that our head is should be this one here, which we can test this. In order to get the size right, let's do two things. Let's first add a new image here. So we go to Image, New, and UV Test Grid, and then just click OK. And then in here, hit Shift-T. 
Okay, so we can see that we've definitely got some size issues. So let's try just selecting this portion, which is L, and scale it around. Okay, so we can see this is the back of the head, or the whole back of the body, actually. So we need to select this portion. Alrighty, so let's find the section with the head, and that would be this section, I do believe. Yes, it is. Okay, so and it's too big from the neck up. So let's just select that whole area. Whoops. I'm going to get rid of these extra faces. And this is actually the buttons uh, and the nose. So let's just select that, hit W, weld. Just get that out of the way. Let's select the head or the head portion and then just scale it up. And we want to be careful not to add too much distortion down here. Okay, and now we can get this even better by using a proportional editing tool, just like we would in normal editing. I think you select an area, scale it, and I'm not going to do too much work here uh, just to save time, but you can see what you would do in order to get this just right. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this as is, just for now. Obviously, you can see there's some stretching here, but we're going to leave it for now so that we don't run out of time. But already, you can see how much better that looks. Okay. Although I am going to scale that whole head up a little bit more. I want to go ahead and get on to some more of the fun stuff, because we're going to add some really cool uh, extra bits to to our texture here that's really going to make it stand out as burlap. Already it looks pretty good for being a procedural material particularly. Okay, but go ahead and leave that as is. You can turn off Shift T and hit Control W. Okay, so going back to the material buttons, there's a couple things we want to do. Uh, what we want to do is go in and add some variety. So the first thing, if you think about burlap, you know, it's not a fine material. It's very rough. There's a lot of loose strands. You know, you can kind of think of it as uh, twine that's been woven together. You see a lot of loose threads, etc. So let's see about how we go to add that. Let's add a new texture channel. Click Add New. And let's add... Let's add a Clouds. Now, if you think of this, how, how are we going to make this into strands? Well, it's actually pretty easy. And what we're going to do is use Hard Noise and go over to our colors. And you see with Hard Noise, we start to get these strand-like images in here. If we go to colors, turn on color band, and then I want to swap the position of these two sliders. So left click on this one, then left click and drag, bring it over to the right side. Left click on the other one, left click and drag. And check it out, look what we're starting to get. And one of the cool things here is that we get all these little extra strands coming off. So it's like strands within strands, which is really, really cool. So now all we need to do is change this blue to a nice kind of a, you know, a thread color like the rest of our burlap. Something about like that ought to look good. Let's see what happens when we render. Whoa, not so hot. You can see it's way, way too big. So let's just turn this way, way down. Maybe maybe we've done a 0.05. Now hit render. Okay, better, but still really big. Okay, let's turn it clear down to zero. That's getting pretty good, but that's, you know, maybe we don't want to go quite that small, since technically that doesn't exist. 0 0.001. That looks pretty good. Let's maybe go back, and we want to add it to the, the UVs as well. Let's maybe add a little bit of an, a bump map to it, just a little bit. Probably won't see too much difference. Oh, okay. That's starting to look a little furry. Which is okay, because, you know, when you think of old burlap teddy bears, they were, you know, they were very worn out, they were frayed, and so they did almost have a little bit of fur to them. So this is starting to look pretty cool. And, you know, we're starting to get this nice variety in here. But let's do a little more. Let's go ahead and add another channel. Add new. And this time around, let's add a noise. And then go back to the material buttons, and change this purple over to a nice dark brown. And what this is going to act as is kind of dirt within it, in it. Okay, that's kind of showing up. Let's maybe make this a little darker. And this will be very, very subtle. We'll also add some Noor. 
but it will really help. When you add in all these different things, it really helps. So you can see you start to see a little bit of it here. Let's be sure to change that to UV. Here again. Okay, so you know we just start to get these little specks, and perhaps those are areas where the burlap is kind of pulling apart. You know, the seams are a little further apart. apart. All right, now we're going to add just one last texture channel, and that's a last another clouds one. And this time around, I'm going to increase the noise size, increase the noise depth, and go over to colors, add a color band, turn on the alpha, and then just pull these sliders around and change this over to a nice dark, darkish brown. And what I'm doing is these are maybe dirty patches on the on the teddy bear, such that you know maybe it's getting a little dirty, it's worn in some areas, etc. Let's see how that looks. That starts to look pretty cool. Maybe it's a little, not quite enough variety. So we can add another slider in here and maybe change this to a very, very dark brown. So we get a little more variety. Maybe make this a little lighter. Maybe try even putting on hard noise. No, we don't like hard noise. Okay. Let's see how that starts to look. Oh, okay. Let's try going over and turn on UV. Again, check it. You don't want to be sure to render constantly. You know, because every time you make a change, render it to see what you're doing. Okay, I'm starting to like that. There we go. You can start to see, you know, we're getting variation where the seams are. Maybe these are dirty patches. Maybe let's turn the color down a little bit just so it's not quite as effective. Let's turn the nor value up just slightly since, you know, there's there should be these should be little raised surfaces. Okay, that's starting to look pretty sweet. I don't know about you, but it looks kind of like a burlap teddy bear to me. Now, one thing that I did earlier, I realized that I forgot to change, is I turned the ambient occlusion off just to increase the render time. So let's turn that back on and see how it looks. Sweet. It looks like a nice teddy bear to me, and frankly, I, I would give it to my kid if I, uh, assuming I had a kid. Uh, so to do one last thing, we're not going to take this any further because we're starting to get a little long on time, but let's add a nice black shiny material to the buttons and the nose. So let's just go in, just to make this easy, let's select them, go over to the edit buttons, Click New under the Links and Materials. Back to the Material buttons. Delete that material and add another one, just so that we're not using the same one. Because actually, what I accidentally did when I heard it hit New is I made a duplicate of the burlap. Now let's change the material color to a nice, very, very dark gray. Let's maybe increase the spec a little bit and the hard value. And let's maybe give it a slight blue specular value kind of helps with the the gray alrighty and let's maybe add a oh actually we can probably leave that just as is oh one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to click assign under the edit buttons there we are sweet I don't know I mean I have to say that I, I kind of like it Let's maybe make that a little darker though, since you know they're sometimes that like almost black stone. Now the buttons might be plastic, but for this point we can get away with both of them. And there we go. Uh, I would say we've got one darn nice little teddy bear, and we're gonna leave it at that. So this, you know, as an experiment into procedural te textures, looking at this, a lot of people wouldn't guess that it was procedural, but it all is, and it's a lot easier than painting the material from hand. And you've got a lot more versatility. So with this, go on, create your own procedural materials, and have a blast.